Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel and happy 2021. So this is the first episode of my Monday, Wednesday, Friday uploads from now until March. So if you're not subscribed to see these episodes, please make sure you subscribe to the channel uh, so you don't miss anything. So I'll be doing three different types of content. The first one will be videos in the field or days in the life. We're kind of showing you guys what it's like to be a structural engineer. The other one will be answering some of your questions. And other ones will just be re uh, regular discussions to talk about my thoughts on the engineering profession and how we can make it better together. So in this video, I'm actually gonna be answering one of your questions that keeps coming up quite often. And it's, when should you start your own engineering firm? And that's not really an easy question to answer. So I'm gonna break it down into three different uh, things to think about prior to taking that step and things that have helped me along the way to make sure that I was successful. Like I said, there's no textbook answer to this, but here are some, some of my thoughts. The first thing is to make sure you have clients or contacts. So again, if you have a lot of contacts that could be potential clients, you'll be able to get that work on. The last thing you want to do is leave your firm and steal clients with you just because it, uh, it leaves a bad taste in everybody's mouth. And especially if you're going to be competing with that firm, you don't want to be on a bad business practice. Uh, so that's something I'd say avoid is if the clients come to you naturally, yeah, sure, but don't, uh, I would avoid uh, pre-planning with the clients that you're going to be leaving and uh, that they'll be coming with you. Uh, so that's, uh, most companies do have non-compete clauses uh, in the consulting side, especially when you're a principal. It's just something to keep in mind. Uh, so yeah, if you want to have a lot of clients and contacts um, that you could reach out to. Uh, but again, I wouldn't do that while working at the company. I'd do that uh, after, uh, once your non-compete is expired. So you want to, again, uh, have a lot of people. Or the other alternative is that you are a bit of a salesman and you could go to door to door knocking. Uh, showing a bit of a portfolio and some uh, some practical experience that you have, and hopefully you'll, people will give you a shot, and uh, you'll be able to get your shot that way. So that's the first part is you know having that uh, that client that potential client base, or having the skills to pick up the phone and uh, and start making calls. That's kind of what I did a little bit to be honest. Is I had a good client contact base, but when I started my business, the economy was a little bit down here in Canada, so I had to do a lot of uh, door knocking. So I called. I, uh, I left all my pride at the door and I picked up the phone and called as many people as I could uh, to essentially be able to get some clients and uh, start making a name for myself on my own. When I left my old company, they actually hired me, uh, my company, uh, to help them on some of the old projects I used to work with them. So that was a great, great fit. They were able to kind of help um, start my business and I was able to kind of uh, leave them, make sure that they, uh, they were able to finish some of their projects. When I left there, I gave, I think, three months notice because uh, I was in a pretty key role, so I wanted to make sure they wouldn't uh, be in bad shape. And again, I think that went a long way because we're still on great terms. I still go to all the Christmas parties, and uh, and yeah, like it's uh, it's kind of a weird relationship, but it it worked out really well. We're in two different fields; they're mostly mining uh, intensive. While I, I try to tackle more residential and commercial projects, uh, that's why I think the relationship went well is in having that separation between the two areas of practice. Uh, and yeah, and so I stayed as a, as one of their uh, their subcontractors. On, uh, on the projects for about a year, I'd say. Something else I want to add about the clients is that you want to make sure that uh, you don't go on your own thinking that you're going to be, if you're at a big firm, that you're going to be getting the big jobs. Um, and I don't mean to say that in a bad way, just uh, a lot of these bigger packages or anything that goes up for tender on the engineering side is usually, anyways, where I'm from, usually over $100,000. Uh, and that's what goes up to tender. So if you're a one or two person office, you're not going to have the resources to be able to complete those projects. So I wouldn't rely on those. I'd say, stick to, you know, the small projects. Like when I started, I was doing a lot of connections design, uh, you know, mezzanines for, you know, institutions and, uh, and some commercial stuff, uh, platforms for mining, uh, lifting lugs, like small stuff, right? And obviously the residential, like taking on load bearing walls, foundations, uh, small stuff like that, like stuff that I could handle both the drafting, uh, the reporting and the, uh, the field work. I highly don't recommend going on your own and uh, taking on more than you could chew because then you only get one shot with those people especially if that's the first time you're, they're going to try you and word of mouth goes a long way. So I'd say like, take, stay small, take what you can. And again, it's not about making the most money. It's about building a name for yourself. Um, again, I don't mean that in the don't charge enough. I mean, charge what you're worth and what the, the market calls for. I just wouldn't say uh, undercut your prices just to get, get the work and get a lot of it. No, pick a few people that will give you a shot, deliver the best product for them and always give more than you get. That's kind of what I say when you're first starting out. Uh, obviously what you get has to be, uh, it has to make sense based on what you're, what you're providing. Um, but the quality of service, that's where you really got to shine. You got to be able to pick up the phone when they call. Not, not, you, I think you guys know what I mean. 
um, and you got to be able to be on site and be able to assist them. That's a really key element to starting your own business and really uh, nurturing those clients and those contacts. The next thing I'd say is financial backing. So you need to have enough money to be able to pay your professional fees, your insurance fees, uh, software, codes, standards, all the things that you don't really see um, at the big firms or at the firm that you might be at. Um, like, you know, standards add up. So in Canada, let's say you have to buy the latest of uh, the Ontario Building Code or the National Building Code. All those those things add up. So you should be budgeting for that. I highly advise that you don't steal from your previous employer. Um, even if, you know, you just take the PDF with you, that don't do that. Don't use it. I know you're saving two, three hundred bucks every time. However, that's I don't think that's ethical. So I'd avoid that at all costs. And obviously that goes the same thing to do with software. Don't steal software. Uh, pay for all the software you're going to use or do hand calculations as much as you can. Again, most of the projects you're going to be doing are going to be smaller, so you'll be able to get away with doing hand calculations on most of the, the projects that you take on. I remember what, what I did is I uh, used, I purchased a software I could use across multiple uh, areas, so I, I knew what I could do with hand calculations really easily, and I, I put all my money into one piece of software that would allow me to, uh, to serve multiple disciplines. Something you have to keep in mind too is I would say yeah, you should have enough money to last at least six months. Uh, because most projects, by the time you get them, you're not getting paid between 30 and 90 days. So let's say it takes you two to three months in customer acquisition. You'll need another two and three months to get paid. So have enough money to cover you for that period of time. So again, take the time, budget it properly, and don't go in this thinking it's going to be easy uh, on the financial side. People aren't going to pay you as easily as you think they are. It's not uh, It's like Walmart where you, you go, you get an apple or something, and then you pay for the, the counter. That's not how it works, uh, unfortunately. I'm, Again, big advocate for trying to change that. However, it's that's just not the way it is uh, where I'm from anyways. It's typically 30 to 90 days for payment once uh, once the invoice has been sent out. And the third thing I'd say is the passion for it. Like you need to be passionate about entrepreneurship and wanting to run your own business. So that means the accounting, payroll, taxes, all the things that you're not going to have the money to sustain at the beginning. Unless you might, which is great, but you're not going to have the money to pay somebody to do all that stuff full time. Uh, when you start, even part-time, like, there's a lot of things that you're going to have to do yourself. So you're, if you're thinking that you're going to be working 40 hours a week for 40 hours of pay, it's not realistic. I remember when I started my first business, I was uh, doing everything. So I was working, you know, 80 hour weeks, I'd say, for roughly 20 hours of pay. So it was not linear at all. And that's something to keep in mind is it's just not going to be, uh, just not going to be as easy as you think. Uh, and you have to put the work in. You have to love it. Like that's something I remember is like, I wouldn't mind doing the, uh, the accounting, the bookkeeping, just because it was it was a means to an end, right? It was to uh, fulfill my passion and my goal, which was to eventually uh, run my own engineering firm. And uh, and yeah, that's kind of what I did. Um, it's the whole the whole meme, right? Uh, you rather work you know eighty hours a week for yourself uh, for fifty thousand dollars a year than work for somebody else for forty hours uh, for a hundred thousand, right? You rather work for yourself. Uh, and make your own, and, and that's not for everybody either, right? I hope you guys don't take this as, uh, you know, everybody's going to run their own business and stuff like that. I think it, it really depends on the person and what you want. Like for me, I love being able to take the projects that we work on, uh, work with the clients, the client relationships. Uh, I love having a staff that grows. Like those are all things that really excite me. Like really, you know, seeing people start from that, uh, just somebody out of school to, you know, a, a full engineer or whatever it is. Those are all things that are super exciting and super rewarding and, and allowing people to grow and learn. Uh, those are all the things that you have to be passionate about if you want to grow uh, a small firm. Anyways, as always, thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate the support so far on the channel. If you've enjoyed this video and watched this far, please subscribe to the channel. It means a lot to me. And again, I'll be uploading Monday, Wednesday, and Friday every week from now until March. See you on Wednesday.